All right, let me introduce our uh, punk rockers uh, to you today. This is Natalie sitting next to me, born and raised here in New York City, graduated from the Hewitt School for Girls on the Upper East Side, currently a junior at NYU. A boyfriend is the leader of the band Murphy's Law. His name is Jimmy Gestapo, and uh, you just waved to Jimmy, yeah. right? Jimmy's in Astoria right now, okay. Uh, next to her is Todd, who is 16 years old, born in New York City, been in the hardcore scene since he was 11 years old. 15 months in reform school, it says here, Todd. Plays guitar for the band The War Zone, a junior high school dropout. Christine, next to him, attending Pratt Institute in Brooklyn, been into the punk scene for six years. She's about 21 years old. Hi, <laughs> Ray, one of the more outspoken members of the punk underground here in New York, been in and out of a lot of bands, around 21 years of age. And next to him is Debbie from Canada, left there when she was 13, currently writes a fan magazine for punks. Okay, now look, we've all seen, you know, the punks around town. I want to know why, why you chose this lifestyle. Let's start with you, Natalie. Why? Why not? No, I mean, other than that. Well, I mean, everybody, everybody's into their own thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, there's some people are into heavy metal. Some people are into being junior executives. We're into this just because this, this scene gives you the opportunity to be an individual. And you get to say what you want to say and do what you want to do. And if anyone disagrees with you, they can come up to your face and tell you so. Instead but, of, you know, but Debbie, you know when they write about it, the writers always say this was born out of a frustration that uh, you guys had somewhere along the way with your yeah. parents, with How your did family, they know that? with Superb. I don't know. All these know. experts keep writing all these stupid books and having these stupid and talk shows. Lots of money. Like Phil Donahue had this ridiculous show on. I'm sorry, Phil, but you really blow. <laughs> and uh, all he did was all he did was put words in our mouths. He kept coming up and going, "You hate your parents, right? You hate your parents. You're all fascist Nazis, right? Right?" And we're like, "Where are you getting this from, Phil?" You well, know? he's getting it from the same place we get it from, but, from what we read about. Well, where do you read these things? Well, well no, New York no. magazine for oh, Okay, my let's God. start with that. That oh. was just out a couple months ago. Peter Blounder should not be allowed to write for Bazooka Bubblegum Comics. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, completely incompetent journalist. Well, then tell me where it comes from, because it is kind of an eccentric way of life. You know life. what it is? These people get these ideas. All right, we're going to do this great story on, on this, like, bizarre cult. Right, and they go down to bars, and they, they eavesdrop in on conversations, and then they don't even print the whole truth. What they do is pick the most sensational, they you know, stories: sex, drugs, orgies. You know, I mean, like the whole article is supposed to be on the music scene, and he ends up writing about my sex life. Who cares about my sex? Life? I do. Oh, well, we just. <laughs> but you know, in the fifties, they tried the beatniks. Even though it's like a, you're you're revolting against something, perhaps there still is a conformity. You can see that you all basically have things in common. You do look alike. How can you say that it's an individual expression when there truly are your hair is basically the same and you have tattoos and things? I don't have any tattoos. Well, but it's a, it's obvious but meeting it's Debbie. But you're I, mean, I don't think I look like Debbie. And I don't think I look. Like but it's Christy the same way all. you guys all think but that you're all. You guys look a lot more alike than we do. But you that all look like something else. else. That's what I'm saying. Is yeah. there any difference? We all look alike, and you all look alike. Exactly. We're more like a family. Yeah. You see, we look after each other. We all like each other. I've been taking care of my husband for like five years, and like he's like my brother, you know. And I'm like, mm. I, like, I don't even, like, if I didn't know her and I saw her in the street and just pushed into punk or hardcore and she was like, you know, need some food or something, I'd spy for her because we're like a big family. You don't find that in like heavy metal and a lot of other kinds of music. They're, most of them are into drugs and like destruction and stuff. We're not into that. Like, we all like look out for one another. What, what exactly are you into? What? Would you say hardcore? Well, see, like, it's getting so cliche. Hardcore. Yeah, hardcore. Yeah. It gets like you know. It's all another label. Well, it's, it's, it's really. Yeah, that's that's all all that's 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 not We don't want to be labeled. You know, we don't want to be. There's all these scenes like the yuppies, the preppies, the japs, the heavy metal kids. You know, we all ended up getting labeled because people have in society they have to classify you, they have to put you in a category because they have to explain you. Mm -hmm. If they can't explain you, then people start getting nervous. What are these kids up to? What's going on with them? All right. Now, do you go to NYU dressed yeah. like that? Yes. You do. Yes, I do. What about your parents? How do they feel about this? How, how does your family feel about it? My, my mother loves it. My mother is yeah, very she supportive. Up to me. She respects my opinions as an individual. She thinks mm -hmm. I can think for myself, and she knows if I have to do this, then I have to do this. Do you have a job? I have three jobs. What do you do? I go to school full-time. I'm a part-time uh, studio assistant for Spiderweb Studios. I'm a part-time assistant for an artist on 24th Street. I work in the school library at Pratt Institute. I'm a fine arts major full-time at Pratt. Now, Christine, I'm I mean, are, are school, you dressed the way, way you dress when you go to these jobs, or are you dressed for us the way you dress, dress at night? I dress, since I've been in New York, I dress the way that I want to. 
since I, before I moved down here, it was a lot harder. I tried to tone it down a little bit, but, you know, it, it really got me angry to have to do that because I'm a very competent person. I can work as well or better than anyone that, that dresses conservatively or straight. And that doesn't really have anything to do so with job performance. So you're not rebelling against anybody. You just I'm chose this. I'm just doing this. what I want to do. doing what you want to do. We'll pause. We'll come right back in a moment. Okay, we're talking about the, uh, the punk scene today. We have five uh, young people with us uh, today, and we're trying to find out about it. Now, Kathy brought up a good point during the break. Are these fights that break out in, in the places, in the clubs that the bands are playing at, uh, does the, the music motivate all of that? No, see, that, that's ridiculous. See, for me, it's like, what, like I see, I'll be watching a band play, like when the cro played the last show that they played. You know, it's like that music just made me move, you know, it just made me start going off. Then you got guys, you know, who come down and like, oh, slam dancing, you know, and they just go around punching people, just like, just going around going bam and just punching people. And it's not, you could just tell it's not, you know, they don't the mean music it. that's making a move. I mean, like, the, there's fights in every single club. You go to Palladium, and I, I mean, I have seen this at Palladium, these guys in Gucci suits start Yeah, but isn't brawling. fighting a part of the scene? No, fighting is not a part of the scene. The, the only difference with our scene is that we're more honest. If you have some kind of beef with somebody, you go up to them, you try to discuss it. If they don't want to talk about it, you know, and maybe it comes to blows, but I think that's a lot better than walking around me, 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 behind each other's backs all the time, mm -hmm. which is what so other people do. basically sticking up for yourself. That's all. You're just a defending way of saying, your don't rights. tread on me. All right. Where did you sleep around. last night? I didn't go to sleep last night. Me and him just hung out mm -hmm. after we got off work. None of us saw I Where, where are you going to sleep anything. tonight? At home, on our, on our apartment on Ludlow Street. You guys share an apartment together? Yeah. How many people in that apartment? Just me, him, and our pit bull, Chiba. Oh, what? Oh, pit bull. Pit bull. Oh. oh, the pit bull. Chiba. Yeah, I thought that uh, was another band. To watch our, <laughs> to watch our band equipment. You watch, to watch our, band our band equipment. equipment. Because our neighborhood isn't the best neighborhood. Low East Side. It's not mm -hmm. really yeah. tough out there. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So well, now, what about sex and drugs? Are you guys all into that? Like I am? No, no drugs in the no scene? No. Nah. Us? It just deteriorates what you want to do. It diversifies everything. That's why our music says something, because a lot of other music, you know, throughout People the 60s or whatever, it just, you, you go lose track, you know, what you want to do. Like, I guess, sort of like with the hippies, what they wanted peace and everything, but they all did so many drugs. You know, they just lost track after a while. You never had a marijuana cigarette, is that what you're track. telling me? No, I tried, yeah, I'm not saying I did it, but then, you know, Within myself, I learned that I wasn't going to go nowhere if I did that. Mm -hmm. I haven't drank in 10 months. I, I don't have to touch anything no more. Well, See, it like looks people... like we got you guys all wrong then, right? Yeah, I mean, the well, public has, has a misconception about... Well, when the, the public, public doesn't understand something, they try to... Put like, it down. They, they either just try to destroy it, or they try to, to give it a, a symbol, a label, so no one understands it, and, you know, turn against it. Politically, See, everybody tries to make I everything black I could ask you about the future. Maybe. How do you see yourselves growing up into like, adulthood? And do you see yourselves getting married and having children and living in society and working, Why worry going about to the, the bank? Yeah. And it you might not ever even come. So. You really you can't, can't worry you know? yourself. You, nothing ever works out the way you plan anyway. But don't you, know? you want to marry Jimmy Gestapo and have little Gestapos? <laughs> <laughs> Just our little camp and queen. But really, don't you want to get married someday? I, I can't really think about it. I'm 20 years old. You know, my, my, view, my goals in life is not to get married what is your and goal do dishes life? for the rest of my well, life. Well, what is your goal? Gee, it is mine. <laughs> no. Well, I like your ring. Can I see this ring? <laughs> What is your goal? <laughs> my goal in life, I guess my goal is really just to be happy in any way I can. Well, you're going to NYU, you're studying something. Yeah, well, I want to be, you know, I, I'm not going to, like, lie and say I'm into this poverty trip because I'm definitely not, you know. Mm -hmm. I want to have money. Politically, where would you say you are? Everybody's different. You yeah, can't everyone's got generalize. their own beliefs, just like everyone out here. Everyone's going to have their own beliefs. We're all individuals, you know, there's no... There, you can't sit here and say, yeah, we're all one thing because everyone here has five different opinions. I doubt they're Republicans. Mm. I am. <laughs> Something no, I would like to clear As a matter of I'd fact, like the group Jimmy's has... a registered Republican. No, as a matter of fact, the, the, the group, if we can call it a group, has been, has been called a conservative, uh, uh, radical right... Uh, well, Phil Donahue right? wants you to think that we're all fascists. Mm. You know, That's Sig Heil, right. Sig Heil, Phil. A lot of us, what we to try go. to do, I can't speak for everybody, but a general idea I got, you know, is that we're like all American. If, when you get into right wing and left wing, you get into politics and you'll always argue that point. Yeah. I mean, a lot of us, I, I think, are proud to live in America because being communist is really downhill. It's, you go nowhere being into communism. All right, we have a psychologist, Joy Brown from WABC Radio, who is going to come out here and give us her analysis of this whole movement, okay? We'll see if she's right, according to you. Right back. Uh, punker, uh, Jennifer, who has come wanted in here a little bit late, you but nice to have you all. I brought Jen Frank, and she was sitting out in the green room oh, saying, where, my mother will never see me. Something and this, of course, is Joy Brown from WABC. I, I, yeah. Something I'd like to clear up is, like, yes. punk rock has, like, pretty much died out, you know, it's just hardcore they now. They all OD'd. And 
you know, I'm not a punk, I'm a skinhead. And there's like a real big difference what between difference? punks and skinheads. Well, skinheads are, there's like, it seems to be more unity with skinheads, like stick together a lot more. They're mm -hmm. bald. <laughs> that's that's one thing. Okay, so you're a skinhead. You're not a skinhead, are you? No way. Well, what are you? Are you a punker? I'm just me. Just you. All right, fine. Okay, Joy, <laughs> what is your analysis of all this? Well, first of all, I think, as you said in the opening segment, that every group of kids, when they're not children anymore, need to say we're different than our parents. I think that's part of growing up in this society. For some of us, it was miniskirts and the boys wore long hair. We wore no makeup. These kids have enough makeup to last a lifetime for those kids who are hippies. And I think that's the point. I asked the audience, how do you feel about these kids? They said, why do they have to dress that way? And I think one of you said it. It's because you can then recognize each other. You can say, see, we're all similar. We believe similar things. We can hang out together because that's part of adolescence to feel like you belong you're no longer a kid you really don't want to be like your parents when you're in your mid to late teens and early 20s these kids are basically they're telling you they're not on drugs most of them are in school a lot of them work they like each other so if they look a are little they weird, rebelling against anything sure what are you rebelling against ugly clothing <laughs> <laughs> One thing I'd like stop to looking up the way I'm dressed <laughs> well,